So where do you want to go? Uh, I'd be down to go to Lake Tahoe. All right. So we'll type in Lake Tahoe. Okay. Flight has always been about the never-ending search for new horizons. In just over 100 years, this search has taken us around the world, gone faster than the speed of sound, and brought us to the dark side of the moon. When you get to where you can travel anywhere in the world very affordably anytime you want, it means where you live, where you play, where you work doesn't matter in the future. I'm Cara Santa Maria, a science journalist exploring the technology of today, tomorrow, and beyond. On this episode of Invention Factory, how will the world get smaller? This is XCOR, an aeronautics company working to make private space travel a reality. To these guys, space doesn't just belong to astronauts, it belongs to everyone. So could I buy a ticket to space next year? You can buy a ticket to space right now. Commercial space flight will start next year. We're attempting to make space transportation low enough cost and high enough reliability and frequent enough that we can actually make use of the things we've found in space. We've developed technology that make this a highly reusable rocket engine where we can fly multiple times a day. It's essentially gas and go. Tell me about the view. What am I going to see? Oh, life-changing, spectacular, unbelievable. It just grabs you because you see that we're all on this little glob of stuff <laughs> hurtling through the cosmos, all seven billion of us together. It gives you a sense that, wow, how could we possibly be alone in this universe? It's a very visceral, emotional, spiritual kind of thing. Right now, we tend to think kind of provincially. You know, I'm, I'm here, I'm standing in this spot. I think just to be able to get up 300,000 feet and look down at the Earth is going to give us a continuum, I think. The potentials of travel are expanding in every direction. As technology takes us to the stars, it's also helping to open up the world to billions of more people, making global travel as accessible as a weekend trip. Come on back and I'll show you our metal 3D printing lab we're able to manufacture designs that you can't cast, you can't machine, you can't mold. Therein lies the excitement. The entire design community is able to recalibrate on what's possible. These are some actual gas turbine test parts that we're building. We're building layer number 939 out of 3,974 layers. Wow. So, so when we come back, there's going to be a piece of a jet engine fully built. Absolutely. So we want to be able to manufacture things you can't build any other way. This is an example of that. First of all, it's a three-dimensional mesh. So there's no part that looks like that in a jet engine, but there could be. There could be a part that looked like that or that looked like that, that instead of solid on the inside, was filled up with that. If I can save 100 or 200 pounds out of the weight of a commercial airframe, those are enormous numbers when you fly the fleet for millions and millions of miles over decades. Because that's significant savings in the amount of fuel that you actually have to put in that plane. Absolutely. You get the idea of just how flexible the technology is. It's up to the design community to go, all right, I just figured out I can build something that I couldn't build any other way. Sure. That's really cool. And maybe we'll have the capability to print different materials onto that, one another. That's a huge thing. So there's no reason to think that in 15 years or 50 years, we couldn't have a 3D printer that could build a jet engine from scratch. Absolutely. If you don't dream it, if you don't imagine it, you're never going to get there. We're making jet engines that are more fuel efficient, they're safer, they're more reliable. There's a billion people on the planet right now that have never flown before but will for the first time on GE engines. There are a lot of ways to open up the world to more people. Whether it's building a reusable rocket, creating a better way to make engines, or simply shifting our perspective just a little bit and finding a smarter way to get around. This is what the guys at Flight Now are trying to accomplish. What is Flight Now? 
FlightNow is a ride-sharing platform for small planes. Private pilots, when they're going flying, they often have empty seats on their plane. So we open that up so they can get enthusiasts who want to go fly, but maybe don't know a pilot to go with. The pilot gets to split the cost, and the enthusiast finally has a way to get airborne. Master switch on. Throttle, quarter-inch open. We're on Tango, looking for a left depart departure with Alpha. Set the two take off traffic, no factor. People ride share all the time. Why is it such a big deal in the sky? If you think about it, we're kind of stuck where we are right now or within a driving distance. How many times do you ask yourself, you know, I would go, but I can't find a ride or I can't get there in time? I mean, this opens up just a ton of possibilities to actually go out there and experience the world. You can go pretty much anywhere you want for a fraction of what it would cost you in a commercial airline. And so you took me to San Francisco and back from Palo Alto. How much would that probably cost me? That typically costs around 60 bucks. 60 bucks round trip? Yeah, round oh, trip. Wow. Commercial flights are only going to 500 airports, but with general aviation, you're going to 5,000. For example, if you're going from Boston to upstate New York, mm -hmm. right now you got to fly into JFK and take a bus or a train up. But with small planes, what you can do is you can just fly direct, and it's going to be a lot faster. I'm an explorer. I'm a pioneer, and I like to do things first. And this is one of those things that you know no one's ever done. It's the designers, the schemers, the imaginers. They're the ones who are going to be inventing the plane that allows us to park it in our garage and then fly to the other side of the world. We can do much more if we treat space as a place not just to go look, not just to take pretty pictures, and not just to send expensive government expeditions to, but where people can go and live and work and make a better life for themselves. Your whole perception of getting from A to B changes. That really just makes the world a smaller place. That opens up a ton of possibilities.